All right, so in this next example, we've got a function f of t in, um, that gives the chirp rate for the snowy tree cricket in terms of the temperature t in degrees, in degrees Fahrenheit, okay? And we're told that this degrees Fahrenheit, this, this function holds for um, temperatures between 40 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, now the first thing we wanna do is just, is just asking us to interpret what f of 42 equals 48 means in, you know, using practical terms. So what we're just asking is like, interpret that in, in words. What is that telling us? So the function, the output of the function is the chirp rate, right? And the input is the temperature. So what we're, what it's saying is, then is just that when, um, when the temperature, so when, um, I'll write it out in words, temp, temperature is um, 52 degrees, 52 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Because T is our input to the function. Um, the chirp rate, chirp rate, okay, um, is 48, because chirp rate is our output, 48, and the units are chirps per minute. Chirps per minute. Okay. All right, so now this next question is asking, what does this mean? F inverse of 80 equals 60. In practical terms, using units. All right, so the inverse swaps the input and the output. So um, if our original function took temperature and gave us chirp rate, then the inverse is gonna take chirp rate and give us temperature, right? So what this is saying is that, um, you know, for an input of 80, right? So in this, in this case now, 80 is our chirp rate, right? Because we're swapping the input and the output. So this is telling us that when um, the chirp rate, chirp rate, uh, is 80 chirps per minute, okay? The temperature, temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Because the, the, the inverse function swaps the inputs and the outputs, right? So the inverse is going to take chirp rate and give us temperature, right? Because the original function took temperature and gave us chirp rate. All right, so uh, next part of this question gives us x an actual function, pretty simple function, looks like it's just a linear function, right? 4t minus 160. And we're asked to find a formula for temperature in terms of the number of chirps per minute. Um, so essentially we're, that's asking for the the inverse function. Okay, so um, let's just let's just write this down what we have. We're given um, c equals four t minus one sixty, right? So I could I'm just going to add um, I'm going to add one sixty to both sides. So I get c plus one sixty equals four t. Whoops, not not lowercase t. It's an uppercase c. Um, right. So what I'm doing is just, I'm trying to rearrange this equation so I have a function for temperature in terms of chirp rate, okay? So, oops, hang on, <laughs> not doing too well here. All right, this should be an equal sign, right? I added 160 to both sides, all right? So I have 4t equals, um, you know, c plus 160. So if, now if I just divide both sides by four, I get um, c plus 160 over four, right? So temperature is equal to C plus 160 <clears throat> over four. Or we could write it as one fourth C plus 40, okay? So that's our inverse function. All right, so now we have a function um, for, so we could actually call that, we can say this is F inverse, but in this case, our input is the chirp rate, right? Okay, um, next question is asking, what's the domain of F? Okay, so, so we're back to our original function. What is the domain and the range of F? Well, we were given, we were given the domain, right? 
we were given the t values. So the um, the domain. So I'm just going to write this domain is just what was given there. Actually, I'll scroll up. Can I get a both on the screen? Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, the domain is just. Um, now I'm going to write this a little different way. I'm going to say t is an element of the set from 40 to 110 using set notation. Okay, and this is in degrees degrees Fahrenheit. All right. Now the range is just going to going to be um, because <laughs> back up though I could you know if we were to graph this function, um, you would have. Uh, you would have basically we have a slope and a y-intercept, right? So um, we would have uh, you know a y-intercept of minus one sixty, and um, you know so we'd have this. It's just a line, right? And so the the range is going to be determined by the endpoints of that line. So we could just say that the range um, is uh, is the chirp rate, right? Because that's our output, and it's just going to be essentially f at uh, forty, right? It's between f at forty and um, f f at one hundred and ten. Okay, and then we can evaluate those um, points. And if we evaluate them, when I put in forty um, into the chirp, this chirp rate formula, right? Um, 4 times 40 is 160, so 160 minus 160 is 0, right? So at, at 40 degrees Fahrenheit, the chirp rate is 0. And um, if I evaluate the other end, if I put on 110 into our chirp rate formula, I get, I get a chirp rate of 280. Okay, so and this is obviously chirps per minute. Okay, so that's the domain and range of the original function. Now let's think about what the domain and range of the inverse is. Okay, so um, remember we're just swapping the input and the output, right? So um, our inverse takes chirp rate and gives us temperature. So the domain, oops, domain of the inverse is essentially the range of the original function. So, you know, it's our domain, the input now is chirp rate. So uh, our domain now is 0 to 280. And our range is um, the temperature, because that's our output. And our range is from 40 to 110. Oops, and I should probably just say decrees Fahrenheit, right? And this is in chirps per minute chirps per minute. Okay. All right. So um, then this next section, I'm just going to have you, I'll have you read over what I have here. And we're just talking about um, the graphs of inverse functions. And, um, and it, as you just saw in that example, um, you're just swapping the domain and range. The domain of the function becomes the range of the inverse, and the range of the function becomes the domain of the inverse. Okay, you're just swapping domain and range, you're swapping x and y. If you consider x, <laughs> the x values as uh, representing the input and y values representing the output. Okay, so um, if you graph the uh, a function and its inverse, you'll find that the graph of the inverse is a reflection of the graph of the original function across the line y equals x. Okay, so um, I am going to stop here, and there's a the next um, uh, example is just uh, looking at uh, uh, graphing a function and its inverse. All right, so I'll meet you back up for this.